This week's blog post is Sculpture Synopsis Part 5 on the Romans. For more on the why and how of the Sculpture Synopsis series, see the first post in the series. You can also find videos of all the posts in a playlist on my YouTube channel. These are the examples we'll use as characteristic. On the left is the patrician with busts of his ancestors, 1st century AD. It's in the Capitoline Museum in Rome. Second from the left is the Augustus of Prima Porta, around 20 BC in the Vatican Museums. On the right, top and bottom, is Trajan's Column, whole and one scene from it. This dates to 106 to 113 AD, and it is still in the Forum in Rome. And this is the colossal head of Constantine from the early 4th century, also in the Capitoline Museums in Rome. I've given you this picture just to give you an idea of the scale. This is a person-sized doorway. This is the head of Constantine. It is very, very large. Okay, looking at dates. The legendary founding of the city of Rome was in 753 BC. Roman civilization lasted until 476 AD, at which point Odoacer and his Germans invaded Rome and deposed Romulus Augustulus, the last emperor who ruled in the western part of the Roman Empire. Within those dates, The Roman Republic lasted from 510 BC to 31 BC, at which point Octavian Augustus became the first emperor. The Roman Empire lasted from then, 31 BC, to 476 AD. Location. Roman civilization begins in the center of the Italian peninsula, which would be up here somewhere. It expands to most of the area around the Mediterranean and much of Western Europe, including the southern part of what is now Great Britain. Dominant ideas. In the empire, propaganda becomes more important than accurate representation of the world. Philosophy in the late empire from the 3rd to 4th centuries AD. Philosophy of the late empire, 3rd and 4th centuries AD, are Neoplatonism and Neopythagoreanism, which are both combinations of religion and philosophy. The Roman emperor adopts Christianity and makes it legal in 312 to 313 AD, and upper-class Romans soon follow suit in adopting it. The media, marble and bronze, as we've seen throughout the Greek period. The subjects are portraits of ancestors, politicians, and upper-class men and women. Such portraits were produced in from the first century BC to the third century AD. Another subject that's popular is records of historical events in the early empire. This you can see from the 1st to the 4th centuries AD. Trajan's Column is an example of that. Also, the Romans liked to do mechanically reproduced copies of Greek works that they brought back from conquered Greek-speaking territories. These copies were done from the 1st century BC to the 3rd century AD. Without these copies, which were made for display in public buildings and in the homes of wealthy Romans, we would have very little idea what Greek sculpture looked like. Style. Early portraits are extremely realistic, copying earlier wax death masks. Portraits of the emperors, beginning in 31 BC, are often somewhat idealized. The Augustus of Prima Porta is a distinctive face, but none of his portraits show him aging, ever. The monuments to the emperor's accomplishments, which I mentioned earlier, are designed as propaganda or didactic art, and they show the emperor's deeds in a format that is easily readable. So it is on these, on such works, more important to show what's going on than to attempt to accurately represent three-dimensional reality. Innovations in this period, there are none. That said, the Romans produced some great and original works of architecture and engineering, many of which are still standing. For example, the aqueduct at Nîmes, the Colosseum, and the Baths of Caracalla. Big names in art, there are none. A couple more examples of Roman sculpture. On the far left is Cicero, who lived in the first century BC. He was one of the great orators and politicians of the late Roman Republic. On the right is the Arch of Titus, 81 AD. Again, it has relief scenes that show the emperor's accomplishments. In the center is Philip the Arab, who ruled 244 to 249 AD. He succeeded a murdered emperor, and he was in his turn murdered, which perhaps explains the look on his face. The final two examples at the top is a sarcophagus with Dionysus and the Four Seasons, dates to about 260 to 70 AD. 
and below is a sarcophagus with scenes from the lives of St. Peter and Christ, which is early 4th century. So this one is actually Christian. Both of these are at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This is from the end of the sarcophagus that has the life of Peter on it, and you can see that at this point they either don't know or don't care what human anatomy looks like, even compared to the one at the upper left, which is the figures are kind of cookie cutter. Where to go to see the originals of Roman sculpture? You could go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the British Museum, the Louvre, the Vatican, and Roman copies are widespread. For the reading, Mortimer Wheeler wrote a book on Roman art and architecture that's often used as a textbook in college courses. You could read the appropriate section in Sandra Shaw's Windows on Humanity. Innovators in Sculpture has a section on Roman narrative reliefs in chapter 7. And for fun, Robert Harris wrote a trilogy on Cicero, Imperium, Lustrum, and Dictator, which gives a good sense of what was going on at the end of the Republic. DianeDurantyWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my other obsessions. To join the Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDurantyWriter.com. As always, thank you for listening.